What's up guys, Trent Palmer here. I uh, am at the Stead Airport. It's seven o'clock in the morning. Uh, it's about 35 degrees out, beautiful day. Um, I've got a spot that I've been eyeing down for a while that I've been wanting to land at. I've never done it. So I figured this would be a perfect time to bring you guys along, show you my process and hopefully land somewhere new. All right, guys, one of the things to look at before you go landing somewhere is who owns the land. It's pretty hard to find the information out there as to what land is legal to land on and what land isn't. Basically, BLM land is our safest bet. It is publicly owned land, so it's for us to use. That being said, it's not something that you're supposed to go out and just say, hey, uh, this is my land. I'm going to build a house out here and start digging a foundation. It is something that you need to be careful, tread lightly. Um, we're not trying to really cause any sort of um, problems and we're definitely not trying to draw attention. The other things, Forest Service land, it's kind of a mixed bag. Sometimes, you know, some people will say you can, some people will say you can't. I have seen an exemption that states that aircraft are exempt from the rules that say you can't use certain lands on Forest Service property. Other places that you should look out for, any wilderness, wildlife, wilderness study area, any of those, those are no go, do not land there. And as far as, I, I know on one of my last videos, I had an app on my phone that I was showing how I saw land ownership and that's called On on X Hunt is what it's called. And basically, this is the zone I'm looking at. It's a strip that is, um, it's showing about 400 feet long, maybe 500. And under, under the settings, you can go into map layers and turn on public lands. Anything that pops up yellow is BLM land. And stead traffic, Reno Fox taxi in Alpha, Westfield 26, stead. Reno Stead Airport, automated weather observation, 1, 4, 1, 6, Zulu, weather, wind calm, visibility more than 1, 0, sky condition clear below 1, 2,000 feet, temperature minus 3 Celsius, dirt point minus 8 Celsius, altimeter 3, 0, 0, 2 inches of mercury. So the spot that I've been looking at is at the top of a, a mountain range here that's just uh, northwest of the Stead Airport where I'm based at. Um, it is at the top of the Petersons, which is a mountain range I think that the peak of is just shy of 8,000 feet. The spot I'm looking at, Google Earth says, is at about 7,500 feet. Um, also, according to Google Earth, it looked like it was about 500, or four or 500 feet long. I couldn't tell exactly. So um, it's something that I've wanted to land at before. I just haven't been comfortable with the warmer weather of the summer. So since it is nice and cool out today, it was, you know, it was just below freezing. So I guess it was about 28 out when we took off. Okay, I think this is it right up in front of me. I'm going to go ahead and slow up a little bit just so I can kind of get an eye on it. There's a little saddle in front of me that I don't know if you can even see in this, this Osmo cam, but basically there's a little saddle right in there that looks like there's a smooth spot. The only problem is it is sunken in on both sides, so it's something that I don't know the feasibility as far as if I'll be able to outclimb the surroundings. So this is just gonna be my first reconnaissance pass or my surveillance pass or just the feasibility pass. I'm just coming up, I'm gonna set it off to my right side so I can see it down there and just take a look. Now, the idea is there is a two track road that I would like to touch wheels on and roll off onto. Um, from here, it's actually not looking too bad. Um, the big thing I don't know is how I'm gonna get out of there. And uh, just even just as important as getting in there would be getting out of there. Um, so I don't wanna put myself in a position where I am getting down, but I can't get back out. So let's not do that today. Okay, we got some funky little wind in here, but that's my spot right in there that I was looking at. So right now I'm still just feeling it out. I don't know 
how I'm feeling just yet. At this point, I'm looking for rocks. I'm looking for anything that might kind of decide to upset my day up here. Looks like my departure path would be down this canyon. Um, I would be lining up. I can't even find the road that I'm looking for, which looks like it is right there. You know, it almost might be better just to land in that field. I'm just looking at it one more time, trying to figure out if this field is just clear of rocks and all that. And it looks like it might have a few little ones in it, but nothing too bad. And man, it is kind of a little windy and bumpy in here and not the nicest wind. that was I ended up dragging there I got down and uh, decided it didn't look that great so I said it was a good time to go ahead go around there was a big uh, ditch in there that I had not seen before so I'm gonna look one more time at this and figure out where I want to land um, it kind of feels like that was the ditch yeah so the problem I'm having is my visibility coming right into the sun like this, I can't really see through my windscreen. So um, I, I kind of wasn't sure where that road was and I ended up a little fast and I kind of drifted past my mark um, a little more than I would have liked to. So I'm gonna go ahead and try one more here, see if I can't get lined up to where I'm comfortable. Um, and if not, then we'll go somewhere else. how we do it so at this point the smartest thing I can do is go ahead and shut down leave it right where it's at I'm gonna walk around see what's out here figure out where I'm gonna go to set up to get back out of here and yeah we're at 7,500 feet top of the Petersons now I'm doing the portion where I just go and walk out the strip see how things feel walk out the whole area you know basically there's sagebrush on both sides of this little ravine there is it kind of closes out on the top up there but um, this is just a nice open little meadow. So the big thing I'm looking for now is are there any big rocks that could ruin my day or am I safe to just drive over this stuff getting out of here? Now, I will have a tailwind takeoff. I'm gonna take off going down the canyon and then follow the, the lowering terrain as I go. Um, you know, with the tailwind, I, I don't like taking off with the tailwind, but I'd rather take off downhill into lowering terrain than take off uphill into rising terrain. Um, that just seems like common sense to me, so I'll walk this through and we'll check things out. Right, so this is the view we got from up here, 70,500 feet. That's the Stead Airport. I don't know if you can see it down there. Um, you can probably hear it is a little bit windy. And then the plane itself is right down there. Man, it is pretty bitching up here. But I am a little nervous just because of this wind about my departure and getting out of there. So what I think I'm gonna end up doing is just pushing the plane to where I have as much of that open field as possible and just drive through that and keep it on the ground as long as I need, you know, pull it off in ground effect as soon as I know it'll fly. Sit in ground effect for a bit and then bank down that canyon. Luckily I've got descending terrain, so that'll help. Dude, check this out. Look at this. 
that. I've actually never been up here on any vehicle, hiked it, nothing. I've never been to the top of the Peterson, so this is bitching. But man, it's it's a good, shit, I'd say 15 mile an hour right here, which, you know, at this altitude, up with this little eddy that I'll be flying through is a little spooky. So, let's go push the plane back. You know, I'm supposed to name these places after landing here if I'm the first one to come in. I don't really have a great idea for a name though, so why don't we do this? Why don't you guys comment or let me know what you think a good name would be for this place and I'll go through the comments, I'll pick the best one. I'd like to use something with Petersons because it is the Petersons or Pete's or you know, something like that, but I'm open to anything. Go ahead and comment. Okay, that's too much work. I'm gonna go ahead and taxi to the end and we're gonna try to get out of here. Clear! <laughs> I don't know why I call clear when I'm out in the middle of nowhere. It makes no sense. Like there's anyone in the way. Maybe some deer or freaking mountain lion. I know mountain lions live up here. I'm just taxiing all the way to the top here. As far as I can get this dang plane. So I'm giving myself every inch of space that I can right here, and I'm also starting a little off center. There's a thing called P factor and gyroscopic precession. Everything's gonna wanna push me left. Every time you push right, you're fighting the forces that are helping you go forward. So my idea here, starting a little crooked, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and let the P factor push me, and then, you know, as well as the gyroscopic precession when the tail comes up, get me on runway heading. Keeping this thing until I'm at least seeing 30, 35, um, which is a speed I know I'll fly at. And then, uh, yeah, I'll just hope that everything works and we get out of here. Going full throttle, and here we go. Okay, tail is up. Airspeed's completely dead. And there's 30. And I'm off. And now I'm staying low, not trying to overclimb, because I know I've got some funky winds right there. And now I'm just following this canyon out of here. All flaps are out, and oh, I can I can breathe a sigh of relief. That actually was a, a little a little bit of a um, spookier place than I expected. I will say that once I got on the ground, there was a side of me that said, uh, "What are you doing, dude?" So, I don't know if I'll be going back there. It was a pretty cool spot. I'll put that little notch in my belt. Now while we're up here, we might as well have a little fun and just buzz around the Petersons, huh? That's the spot right there. That's where we landed. There's almost a spot up here that could totally be doable. Rocks, rocks, rocks galore. Maybe not, I don't know. I don't know, that spot actually looks kind of doable. So, I found a new spot up here which looks pretty good. Um, it's definitely plenty long. I'm trying to feel out if it's smooth or not. What I can tell you is I have a, such a good headwind both for takeoff and landing that this spot of anywhere would be like prime and it's just perched right on top of everything, right on top of the world. So maybe I'll go in and set down on this one and see how it feels. I did not see any rocks in that area. The way that the geography runs looks like there aren't rocks there. So uh, I'm gonna just put down right on the, right on the last part of the uphill and see how that works out for me. Um, again, I don't want to get down too far below it and get way into this rotor behind it, but oh man, that was hard. <laughs> and that rotor is what I'm talking about. That just totally stuffed all lift I had. <laughs> I just slapped down. Anyway, here we are at another spot. I guess it's worth jumping out and checking this one out as, as well.
saying any landing that you can walk away from is a good landing and any landing that you can use your plane again is a great one. Um, well, I think the plane's still usable, but I smacked down hard. I'll show you where I touched down. And I basically flew down in here and touched down uh, probably right about here, bounced and then just came to a skidding stop. So much wind that it was easy to get stopped. What killed me was basically when the wind comes from the east, it's going off here, it's coming, and it's just churning. The whole back side of this mountain is like a sink right now. The, obviously, the, the windward side has a ton of lift, so that's what I'll be taking off into. Right now, I've got, I don't know, 200 feet, but 200 feet with, uh, I don't know, 15 to 20 miles an hour on the nose, plus that lift from the end, I'll be out of here, I don't think, with any problem. Okay, so this stuff doesn't look so good. Um, that'll mess up a tire. I don't know. I should probably try to get rid of this one if I can, which I don't know if I can. Yeah, there we go. That's a good bit of wind. So the theory is if I get going, if I'm not off the ground by here, it drops off so much. I guarantee I will be. There's the plane right there. I'll have to check my app and see what altitude we're at, or what elevation. Okay, so the GPS is saying we're at 7,700 feet. This place is pretty incredible. I'm going right to the peak right now, I'll show you where it is, but man, look at these views. And who would have thought you could take an airplane and land it on top of the world? Look at that, every direction. So awesome. All right guys, this wind has picked up pretty significantly. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and blast off. We're gonna take off into the wind and yeah, call it a day. That was a fun one. Again, if you guys have any good names for this spot, I haven't named it yet. Go ahead, comment below, let me know. And yeah, let's get out of here.